Hello everyone, my name is Peter Hockey. I'm a scientific coordinator at the Personalized Health Informatics Group at the SIB Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. And today I'm going to talk about how to use Python and R with RDF data. So in my today's talk, I'm going to handle two topics. So the first one is how to load data from GraphDB in Python and R. And this will involve steps such as handling dependencies, setting up a connection to a Sparkle endpoint, running a Sparkle query, and also retrieving the results. Now, the second topic I'm going to be handling today is how to go from running a single query and retrieving the results of this query to running multiple queries and combining these results within Python and R. Now, there are some assumptions I make regarding a previous knowledge. So for one, I assume you know how to load data in the GraphDB triple store. Now, if you haven't done this before, then please feel free to pause this video and look up the link on loading data in the GraphDB triple store I provided below. Another thing I'm not going to be covering in more detail is how to query data with Sparkle. I will also be reusing some of the Sparkle queries handled in a previous talk. So if you want to learn more about their inner workings, then please feel free to consult the video on querying data with Sparkle I have linked below. Even though I started this talk with slide, I'm going to spend the majority of the rest of my talk in a development environment. So this will be either Jupyter in case of Python or RStudio in case of R. And in both cases, I'm going to be using GraphDB as a graph database to which I will connect and query the data on. So let's get started with the first part. Now I already went ahead and started my Python development environment. So I'm running it in a Jupyter notebook. And the first thing I always have to do when using a new package is simply installing it and then inputting the models I plan to use. So in this case, I'm going to be using Sparkle wrapper package model to connect to a Sparkle endpoint running on a GraphDB database on localhost. But let's start by showing you how to install, uh, install this package. So this is how I've done it on my local installation. And in this case, the requirements are already satisfied and also the dependencies are already been installed and taken care of. This means I can go on and just simply input the models I'm interested in. Great. So next I can go on with setting up a connection to a Sparkle endpoint. And for this, I need a few pieces of information. So I already mentioned that the GraphDB database is running on localhost. And I looked up in online documentation that the default port number is 7200. And I named the project SPHN underscore demo. So this is all the information I need to construct, to, construct an URL, which I then provide as parameter to the Sparkle wrapper function. And I obtain a reference to a Sparkle wrapper object. And if I look at the endpoint, I can, I can see what I've just stated that it's running on localhost on port 7200 and that the name of the project or repository is SPG and demo. So before I can run a query, first I need to define one. 
And for this purpose, I have reused a query from a previous talk. So I linked the talk in my slides, but also on the website. So if you're interested in learning more about the inner workings of this Sparkle query or Sparkle in general, but just like a broad overview of what this query does, it searches and returns, um, assuming that there were matches, patients allergic to past vegetable. And now um, one way, or let's say one brute force way of doing this would be to search then for each and every single type of past vegetable. So, so for example, peanuts, lentils, and so on. And then uh, retrieve each and every one of these results and combine them somehow in the end. But thanks to the uh, SPHN ontology and also the SNOMED ontology, there is a simple way. Namely, we can uh, use the reuse the SNOMED CT code for past vegetable and then simply uh, uh, look up all of the substances which are subclasses of this uh, uh, past vegetable class. And by doing so, we can then in the mock data provided for this purpose and also for tra other trainings, we can then look up all of the patients which have had an allergy episode to a substance which is a past vegetable. And this takes care behind the curtains of all the different past vegetable types, so peanuts, lentils, uh, or every or any other kind. So uh, one way of defining such a query in Python is as a multi-line string. And to that end, one can simply reuse this form of syntax. So once for the beginning and once for the end. And I basically just copy and pasted the original query in this string and named the variable query string. So now I can go on to the next step, which is how to run query and retrieve results. But before I do that, first I just set up the query using the query I just defined on the Sparkle wrapper, uh, reference to the Sparkle wrapper objects I just created. And additionally, I set the return format to be JSON. Now the last part I did simply because then the retrieved results have the form of a Python dictionary which is, uh, at least to me, somewhat easier to handle than some of the other provided options. And now I basically have all the pieces in place I need to run the query. And before I do that, just a quick word on the notion I used. So uh, here we see an example of the so-called method chaining. A method chaining allows one to use a reference to an object only once and then to have multiple method calls on this reference. And in this case, uh, one simply calls the query method on the Sparkle, on the reference to Sparkle wrapper object, and then also the convert method and ends up with the uh, results. So now that I run that, of course, the next step is to uh, look into these results to see what has been retrieved. Of course, assuming that there were any results retrieved, which I test for in this first part of this if else construct, but uh, the, the order to do so, uh, one can then simply take all of the results. So this is just a simple, uh, just a complex way of saying, take all of the results that were retrieved, and then I can iterate over each and every single one of these results. And now uh, in order to access a variable of interest, so in the case of this query, we retrieved the patient variable and 
in order to assess the retreat patients, I just simply leave the question mark out and use the patient, uh, the name of the variable to, as a first index of the results and also value then to retrieve the actual value which was retrieved. And when I run that, we can see that there were quite, of, quite a lot of the patients retrieved. And we're going to be reusing uh, these retreat patients also in the second part of this talk. But for now, I'm going to switch to R and show how these same steps can be replicated in R. Now for R, I'm going to be using R Studio, and I already set up an R notebook covering all the different steps involved. Now first, one needs to ensure that the necessary packages are installed. And in this case, I'm going to be using the Sparkle R package. Now I already installed it on my computer, so I only need to include this a running library with the name of the package. And if you need to install the package yourself, this is how you can do it. So I just run that part. And now I can go on with setting up a connection to a Sparkle endpoint. And just as a reminder, I have a local free GraphDB instance so running on a local host, and I already know that the default port number is 7200, and I named the project SPHN underscore demo. And this is all the information I need to set up an endpoint URL. And one additional nice thing that this Sparkle package allows for is for a parameter where I can where I can define prefixes which then get also considered when retrieving the results. So I went ahead and provided a prefix SPHN resource with the corresponding URI. And of course as, as expected the URL of the Sparkle endpoint is same in case of R as it is in case of Python, which is to be expected. Now, in the next step, I need to define a query. And here I will be reusing uh, the query for patients allergic to pulse vegetable. And this is even more simpler to define in R as in Python, I can use just a single, either simple or double, single or double quote to denote beginning and end of the query string. So I run that part also. And now I can go on, run the query and retrieve the results. And for this, I call the sparkle method, I give it the endpoint URL as the first parameter, and then the query string as the second one. And I also provide the prefixes as an additional parameter. And then I display the initial few parts of a few lines of the results. Now, usually this returns the data frame. So data frames are native to R, which has one column per variable of interest, and then it puts the various values as different value uh, as different rows of this data frame. However, in this case, we only have one variable of interest. So the data frame ends up being a bit inconvenient, but this is something that can be handled easy, e easily with a simple transformation. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the second part of this talk. But first I'll switch to Python. So having handled the case of a single query, 
Next, I'm going to show you how to run two different queries and then to uh, combine the different results so it can be used for some type of application. So one thing I find uh, helpful is when I uh, work with data frames instead of dictionaries or some other data types. And in Python, uh, there is a very useful package in my opinion called Panda. So I'm gonna go ahead and input this package now. Uh, uh, depending on your local installation, you might need to install it first with steps I showed earlier. And once I input this package, then I'm gonna uh, transform the results uh, retrieved earlier in the form of a dictionary into a data frame. And I'm gonna name them DF, which stands for data frame, and then the name of the, or or a, a symbol for the uh, query, a uh, pulse vegetable. And, and if you remember, yeah, there was only one variable of interest, namely the patient. So in order to retrieve the value for this patient, I use this syntax. And here I provide the name of the column, which I want to have in the newly created data frame. And, and of course, there are various ways one can, one can define such a data frame. I choose one which I found uh, somewhat simple uh, to produce and also uh, what I hope uh, intuitive for, for uh, somewhat beginners in this area. But let me just run this now. And here we can see uh, it's a, a data frame with one column called patient and shown here are the initial rows with value, uh, each containing one patient uh, value. So having done that, I'm gonna move on to defining the next query. And I'm gonna start with a query uh, shown in the a previous talk on Sparkle queries I provided a reference for, namely query for patients with measurements of leukocytes in blood. And I'm gonna slightly extend this query to also have different data types extracted. So for one, there will be a laboratory result analysis date time. There will also be laboratory results value and also you need, uh, and um, they are all uh, going to be extracted initially as a string, but um, afterwards I will show you uh, one possible way how to simply uh, transform these strings into the uh, desired data type, uh, data type of interest. And this will only be, uh, uh, so to say, uh, a, a glimpse, uh, uh, some sort of pre-processing for any further uh, analysis, which I'm not going to be covering in any more detail in this talk. So here I define then the query string. And then if you remember, I, load, I set the query and the return format and run the query as I did previously. So this will stay the same. Uh, here I expanded the print statement also include uh, the newly uh, added variables, but it's also similar in the sense that it just uses the first, the name of the variable uh, as the first index and then the value as the second for each and every one of the results retrieved. And now um, I come to the step of doing the conversion from dictionary to a data frame, but this time not only with a single variable of interest, but 
with multiple variables of interest and also of various data types. So uh, for the patient variable, nothing has changed. Here I simply retrieve the string value and add it to a, a patient column as the next row into the patient column of the data frame. Um, and I do something similar to other variables of interest, but this time, in addition, I use the to date, to date time method, a built-in pandas method, uh, uh, in order to convert the string representation of laboratory laboratory result analysis date times, which was retrieved, and to convert it into a daytime format, which is easier to handle and also has quite uh, quite additional number of methods which can leverage this type of format. And for the laboratory results value, I just simply access the string value, but then convert it to a numeric format in case I want to do some arithmetic operations afterwards. And you need, I, I simply, uh, 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 at least for now, retain the string representation of the laboratory result unit. And again, there are uh, different ways one can perform this transformation from a dictionary to a data frame. And I just uh, uh, chosen one, which I found somewhat simpler to perform. I also included the links to a more advanced uh, advanced ways one can co one can do this conversion. So, so let me run this now. And here we can see it's a data frame, so meaning it has for each variable a, a, a column with a corresponding name, and the values are entered as rows. And here only the initial couple, several rows are displayed. And in the last part of this integration of various uh, results from different type of Sparkle queries, I just show how to do the so-called left join. Left join meaning in this context that uh, when done on the patient variable in the two data frames we, def we just defined, it will keep all of the patient values for the first data frame from the query on patients which are allergic to pulse vegetable. And it will take only a selection of values for different types of variables of interest in the second data frame uh, with query on leukocytes measurements and it will uh, keep only those values where the patient column match matches a, uh, an entry in the patient column for the past vegetable data frame. And if we run this, so uh, and also compare the the dimensions of the different data frames. So for example, DF pulse vegetable. Uh, no, I think it's length. So for the pulse vegetable data frame, we see originally there are 380 rows. And if we compare this to the Final data frame, we see that this number is the same. And also if you look how many rows does the second data frame have, the DF leukocytes measurements, we see that it has even more meaning that some of those or around 100 and, or exactly 120 of those didn't have a match. And because of this, they were left out. So having shown this in Python, next I'm gonna 
demonstrate these steps also in R. Now, before I show you how to combine results from different queries in R, I promised to show you how to transform a data frame from a somewhat less convenient form into a form uh, which is easier to handle and which one might expect. And just to give you an image of what exactly I'm thinking of, uh, there is a term called tidy data to denote such easy to handle data frames. In, in this case, it means that for each variable of interest, there is one column for each value or each observation over these different variables, there is a row. And in each cell, there is a simple value as opposed to a, a nested value or even some other type of data structure. And this uh, simple criteria uh, actually make uh, combining results or many other different operations uh, quite easier uh, to perform and such are uh, quite recommended. Now, if you remember from the previous query, there's only one variable of interest. And even though the return data type was a data frame, it was quite uh, a bit confusing with each and every single value being placed in a similarly named column. Now, this can luckily uh, easily be fixed. And I already prepared a one line which does this. Now, uh, don't worry if you uh, uh, don't understand the concept of uh, calling apply on a data frame together with uh, a tr desired transformation and then generating a new data frame from it. Uh, for now, I, I, I think it's uh, also sufficient just simply to use this as a template, just in case if you end up having to run a query which produces a similar result, then you just need to uh, replace the query results with, with the name of your uh, results variable. And additionally, I also uh, made sure that the column is named as expected. And if I run this, uh, one can see that the results are similar to this tidy data format, uh, which one would come to expect. Now, next I wanna show you also in R how to deal with various data types, also data and numeric and just as a reminder, again, I will be reusing a query for patients with measurements of leukocytes in blood handled in one of the previous training videos. And I expanded again this query uh, with this part, which uh, uh, in addition to querying for patients fulfilling this criteria also retrieves the data of the laboratory result analysis, but also the laboratory result value and the associated unit. And um, as before, uh, I put this uh, query string as a parameter in addition to the endpoint and prefixes uh, when calling the Sparkle method to obtain the query results. And since in this case, there is more than one variable of interest, we already obtained the expected format with each of the variables having uh, their own column and the values placed in different rows. But there is one difference compared to the same query run in Python. Here, 
I additionally made it explicit that I want to uh, retrieve the laboratory result analysis data as a string. So using this call, this is simply because on my local installation, we're running the query without this explicit conversion. I noticed there might be some issues in uh, uh, guessing, so to say, the exact date, time format. And as this is something which I find uh, more easier to handle in R or, or any other high level language, I just simply retrieved string from the, from the uh, uh, graph database. And then I handle the conversion later on in R. Now, in the next step, I perform this type of conversions. And to this end, I utilize two additional libraries called TPLYR and Lubridate. So they are actually from a whole uh, set of libraries uh, called Tidiverse, uh, something uh, I find uh, very useful and I can uh, gladly recommend they use. And the TPLYR, for example, uh, allows one to use something similar to method chaining in Python. In this case, uh, uh, this is performed utilizing the so-called pipe operator. So this is basically a, a syntact syntactic sugar, but uh, uh, for, for me, it produces a more easier to read and attain code. So this is why I also before, uh, applied it in this case. And what I do here basically is that uh, for each and every uh, measure, uh, so each and every uh, row of the data frame with the laboratory measurement results, I perform a conversion of the laboratory result value as a numeric data type and assign it to the same column. So in place, so to say. Additionally, I perform the conversion of the date time string into the lubricates uh, date time type and also re rename this variable or better said, introduce another variable for the laboratory result analysis date time. So not as a string representation, as a string type, but really a date time type. And I keep the other two variables, the patient and the unit in the original string format. And last, I just select variables of interest in the order I'm interested in. So when I run this, I can see that uh, the results are as expected and also that the laboratory results analysis daytime is not of type string anymore. And last but not least, um, I perform a left join on the data frame with the patients uh, allergic to both vegetables and with the data frame for the patients having um, leukocyte measurements, also with the laboratory results, analysis, date times, values, and units. And I do this left join again on the patient variable and obtain, so in this case, only the initial few rows are displayed, but of course, if I look at the, the length of the data frame retrieved, oh, just a second. They are actually uh, 380 rows, which corresponds to the number of rows of the data frame for the post vegetable query.
Now for further information, I've included references and links to material I myself have found to be very useful when learning about Python and R in context of data science. I specifically recommend an, the excellent course for Python and also an equally good book on R for data science. Now I would love to hear from you, especially if there are any other topics you are interested in learning more about. And until then, thank you for your attention and have a pleasant day.